So in this tutorial, we're going to show you all the major ligaments of the ankle joint using our amazing 3D anatomy model. If you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khaled here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we're going to be looking at the key ligaments of the ankle joint. We're going to be looking at the lateral ankle ligaments, the deltoid ligament on the medial side of the ankle, as well as the distal tibiofibular syndesmosis. So let's dive in. So if we run over and start with the lateral side of the ankle, and there are three main ligaments that present in this area. And we can see that they all attach from various bones to the lateral malleolus, the little bony prominence that we can find, which is the distal fibula on the lateral side of the ankle joint. So those three ligaments, the first of which is the calcaneofibular ligament. And as we can see, it runs from the calcaneus to the lateral malleolus. We then have the posterior talofibular ligament, which runs from the posterior talus to the lateral malleolus of the fibula. And finally, we have the anterior talofibular ligament, which we can see running from the anterior talus to the lateral malleolus of the fibula. Now, the ATFL, the anterior talofibular ligament, is by far the most commonly injured of the three ligaments. And this most commonly happens when an individual has an inversion or inward sprain of their ankle combined with plantar flexion. And the most common times that we see this is when an individual jumps and then lands in that inverted plantar flexed position because it's going to stretch that anterolateral side of the ankle, which is exactly where the ATFL is. So we're thinking about netball players, we're thinking about basketball players, even soccer players, when they jump and then land on that plantar flexed inverted position at the ankle and that's when they injure that particular ligament. So now if we reset and we can run across to the medial side of the ankle and the next ligament set that we're going to have a look at is the deltoid ligament. Now the deltoid ligament is a collective term referring to these four ligaments that we can see here on the medial side of the ankle. And we can see that the deltoid ligament has this clear triangular shape in appearance. And it's actually really, really strong. We can see that the apex of this triangle meets at the medial malleolus of the tibia. So we had the lateral ankle ligaments attaching to the lateral malleolus, that bony prominence on the lateral side of the ankle at the fibula. The medial malleolus is that clear bony prominence that you'll be able to feel on the medial side of the ankle and the medial malleolus is actually part of the tibia bone. And then as we can see from the apex, the bases of those four ligaments attach to different bones. So let's go through those four ligaments. First of all, we have the posterior tibio talar ligament running from the medial malleolus posteriorly to the talus and the anterior tibio talar ligament. And this is anterior to the joint. And as we can see with both of these on the screen now, they run from the medial malleolus to the talus, either anteriorly or posteriorly. We then have the tibio navicular ligament. And we can see that this runs from the medial malleolus of the tibia to the navicular bone, hence its name. And we can see that this is the longest of the four in length. And then finally, we have the tibiocalcaneal ligament running from the medial malleolus to the calcaneus bone, also known as the heel bone, of course. Now, what I will say is that the deltoid ligaments on the medial side of the ankle are injured much less commonly than the lateral ankle ligaments. And that's for a couple of reasons. Number one, because of the bony congruency on the medial side is much more stable than that of the lateral side, but also because of the fact that these ligaments are super, super strong. They add a lot of stability and support to the medial ankle. If we do see a deltoid ligament injury in practice, it's normally when you have a significantly externally rotated ankle 
which will open up or stress the medial side of the ankle. Examples of when this might actually happen, I can think of a couple of soccer players that I've worked with in the past where they were perhaps kicked on the medial forefoot, meaning that it pushed their ankle into that externally rotated position. And another thing I've seen a lot is in American football or NFL, when you have perhaps someone like a quarterback who's trying to make his throw just about to put all of their weight onto one leg, and then they get tackled from the lateral side which pushes their ankle into this various position, which stretches all those ligaments of the deltoid. So finally, we're going to talk about a really important set of structures, which is the distal syndesmosis of the ankle joint. Now, these are really commonly missed, so do listen out to this bit. So this series of structures actually sit above or superior to the level of the ankle joint, which is different to what we've seen previously. So here we can see, for example, the lateral ankle ligaments that we looked at earlier, which sit below the level of the tibiotalar or the ankle joint proper, whereas we can see that these sit directly superiorly or above it. And their key role is to bind together the tibia and the fibula. So there are a couple of different structures that are a part of it. Let's dive in. So first of all, we have the anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament as you can imagine joining the tibia to the fibula and it's anterior to the joint and the reason inferior is because we also have a proximal tibiofibular ligament at the knee joint which is anterior we also have the same situation at the posterior ankle with the posterior inferior tibiofibular ligament and then another really important structure to mention is the interosseous membrane. So the interosseous membrane, as you can see, sits kind of throughout the leg between the tibia and the fibula. We also have an interosseous membrane at the forearm connecting the radius and the ulna. Now, if we think about the distal portion of this, that's where we have a binding which is referred to as the interosseous ligament. It's almost thought to be a bridge between the interosseous membrane and the other two tibiofibular ligaments that we saw a second ago. Now, as we said, the syndesmosis is incredibly important. It binds the tibia and fibula, and this is crucial for weight bearing. Imagine, for example, being able to walk, but without an attachment between those two bones. Therefore, the syndesmosis provides that bind, and without it, we wouldn't be able to weight bear. Imagine for a second if we look at the ankle joint, we actually need these ligaments to keep the tibia and fibula in place so that it forms that mortise lock around the talus bone, which we've highlighted here. Um, so the times that we might commonly see a syndesmosis injury in practice is when we have a heavily externally rotated ankle joint. And we talked about a couple of examples where this might happen earlier when we talked about the deltoid ligament. And the idea being is that when you have that high force trauma, it can actually force the talus to rotate laterally. And that almost forces the fibula away from the tibia, which shears those particular structures. You'll commonly hear of this injury also referred to as a high ankle sprain because of the fact that the structures are above the ankle joint proper as opposed to the lower ones, which we looked at earlier. So, ladies and gentlemen, that completes this tutorial of the ankle ligaments. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And we do have some brilliant videos talking about different pathologies of the ankle ligaments, including chronic ankle instability, a syndesmosis injury in more detail, and an injury to the lateral ankle ligaments. So be sure to check those out and you'll be able to find the links to those around me. Otherwise, make sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button to support us. We've got loads more content on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and our website, clinicalphysio.com. I'm Khalid, see you soon here on Clinical Physio.